This is a root cause analysis of the Concorde accident in Paris, France on July 25, 2000. To perform this root cause analysis, we'll use the cause mapping method. The cause mapping method consists of three problem solving steps. First, we'll define the problem, including the impacts to the organization's goals. We will then begin with those impacted goals and ask why questions to form cause and effect relationships showing the causes that contributed to the incident. Then, once we have all of the causes, we will brainstorm possible solutions. From those, pick the best solutions and then create an action plan. The information from this root cause analysis investigation is based on the BEA report. This is the basic problem outline of the Concord incident. You see that we've captured the problem, the date and time, and location, as well as some additional information specifying where the incident occurred. We also capture the impacts of the organizational goals. Specifically, the safety goal was impacted because of the 109 fatalities on the plane and the four fatalities on the ground, specifically within the hotel. Additionally, the property goal was impacted due to the loss of the aircraft and the destruction of the hotel. This was the first Concorde that was lost in 40,000 flights, which is approximately 900,000 flight hours. This is a more detailed problem outline of the Concorde crash. You see that there is some additional information added on the differences during the incident, the process location, and specific equipment. In addition to the safety and property goal, there were also impacts to the compliance, customer service, and operations goals. To move on to step two of the cause mapping process, we will start with the impacted goal and ask why questions the answer to those why questions becomes a cause and effect relationship that shows which goals were impacted. CauseMap builds backwards through time and will collect and organize all the why questions. Here is the 5 why cause map of the Concorde incident. The safety goal was impacted because of the 109 fatalities on the aircraft. The fatalities were due to the Concorde crashing. Why did the Concorde crash? Because of loss of lift. Loss of lift was caused by the loss of function of two engines, and the loss of function of the two engines was caused by fuel cell rupture. This very simple analysis is accurate but not complete. We can add more detail to the cause map in several ways. We can continue to add boxes to the right by asking why questions. For example, the fuel cell was ruptured because a tire was ruptured. We can add boxes to the left to show additional impacts from the causes. So the Concorde crashing not only resulted in 109 fatalities on the aircraft, but also four fatalities on the ground, which is also an impact to the safety goal. We can add boxes in between to add additional detail. For example, to show how the tire rupturing caused the fuel cell rupture, we can add an additional box that the tire ruptured, then the tire struck the fuel cell, causing the fuel cell to rupture. You can determine if you need to add more detail in between boxes by asking the question, is more detail needed to explain this clearly? We can also add boxes vertically. Frequently, you will have more than one cause required to create an effect. So for example, the loss of lift was caused by the loss of the function of the two engines. Based on the design of the Concorde, takeoff requires three of the four engines. Both of those causes had to be present in order to result in the loss of lift that brought down the Concorde. You can ask yourself what else is required to produce the effect to ensure that you have all the cause and effect relationships when you are creating your cause map. You can also add more detail to a particular area. For example, we don't have any information about what caused the tire to rupture, so we can go into more detail on this portion of the cause map. The tire ruptured because it rolled over debris on the runway. There was debris on the runway because the thrust reverser wear strip from a previous aircraft fell off because it was not fastened effectively. Additionally, the runway inspection was ineffective because it was not performed. In addition to the tire rolling over debris, we have concerns about the strength of the tire. Had the tire been stronger, it may not have ruptured when it ran over the debris on the runway. Some of the contributors to the strength of the tire are multiple relaminations of the tires and excessive toe-in of the damaged tire, which was caused by an error in, a pla in placement of the tire spacer. 
all of these causes contributed to the tire rupture. This is a picture of the ruptured tire as well as the debris that was on the runway that caused the ruptured tire. While we add more detail to a particular area, we also want to add evidence. These evidence boxes provide supporting information that show us that the causes are causally related to the incident that we are looking at. In this case, there was tire debris found on the runway suggesting that the tire had been ruptured. That metal strip that I showed you the picture of was also found on the runway and it was matched to a previous aircraft. As you saw, there were many holes that were drilled in the wear strip that spoke to the inability to fasten the wear strip properly to that previous aircraft. Should provide evidence wherever possible when you are working through a cause map. We're also going to add more detail about the fuel cell rupture. The fuel cell ruptured because the stress that was applied to the fuel cell exceeds the strength. So there's two parts to that. One is the stress that's applied to the fuel cell, the other is the strength of the fuel cell. Had the fuel cell been stronger, it's possible that it may not have ruptured. The stress that was applied to the fuel cell was caused by a pressure wave through the system. That pressure wave resulted from the four plus kilogram mass of tire that struck the fuel cell when the tire ruptured. The pressure wave was also aided by the fact that the fuel cells were full creating nowhere for the compression to go, and contributed to that the original design constraint for the fuel cell was meant to last through a one kilogram debris strike. All of these causes contributed to the fuel cell rupture. Once we have developed the cause and effect relationships that show us what occurred in the incident, we can come up with some possible solutions. Some of the possible solutions that were mentioned in the BEA investigation were to increase the strength of the tires and the fuel cells and to implement a program to prevent debris on the runway. Solutions should be placed directly above the cause they control. When you are going through a root cause analysis investigation, should brainstorm as many solutions as possible. Then pick the most effective solutions for your organization and implement those using an action plan. These are some of the action items related to the causes that we've discussed that were suggested by the BEA. Increasing the strength of the fuel cell, the tire, and implementing a program to prevent debris on the runway. And there was an, also an audit of continental maintenance program. Using a higher level cause map, you can fit the entire investigation on one page. Again, this is an overview cause map that does not show all of the causes. More causes are shown on our poster. You can see that we go into more detail and include some photos, timeline of events, as well as the outline and the solutions. This poster is available for sale on our website. Using a cause map for your lessons learned can help you learn from other people's mistakes before your organization has to go through them. If you need any help investigating one of your incidents, please contact us at info at